Hey, welcome to Meyer Details. I'm Nick. And I'm James. And we're two industrial designers in the big city. Sweating the small stuff. That's right. I almost, did you, did you I almost forget how up. that went? I almost went up. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's, how's it going, James? It's going well. How you been? How was your week? Oh, man. It, it was good. Uh, this is week, what is it? Week two? Week three? Of oh, no Instagram? That's right. How are you feeling? Man, I'll tell you. I feel great. I, um, you know, I was talking about how for a while I was getting that inclination to go to Instagram, to go check things out, right? you know, in those moments of boredom. Mm -hmm. And now that inclination has more or less disappeared. Oh, that's interesting. So the, the, the muscle memory is gone. Yeah. And well, and for those of you who haven't been listening to the past episodes, (laughs) where have you been? (laughs) Have you been on Instagram? (laughs) James has deleted his Instagram app from his phone. Um, and what, this is week three? I think it's I think it's week, I guess it is week three. Um, okay. And, and how do you feel now that you don't have that muscle memory? Like, is there any, have you seen any tangible benefits? I mean, just seeming less spastic is one of them. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I just don't necessarily have that much of an inclination to bring out my phone in general. I mean, other than to check the time. Mm. Um, I mean, normally the only thing that I'm interacting, like the only reason that I'm interacting with my phone is to change my music or, or mm. podcast or whatever. The phone's become an iPod. I know. <laughs> We're regressing. Oh man. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been great. And I, and I feel, I feel good now that I'm, spending more time i think focusing focusing on i guess career i don't know just focusing on like the day-to-day in terms of the work that i'm doing for the companies that i'm working for instead of always like in the back of my mind thinking about okay how what am i going to do next okay so you feel like you feel like you've been a lot more focused on these projects yeah i well i don't know i i think maybe in a way maybe my focus was like a, a slightly more divided i mean it's already slightly divided because of being a freelancer and working on right. multiple projects yeah um but i wouldn't say that instagram was and in any way a real detriment to my work it was just it was something that was always in the back of my mind as something you know the the thing that i had to do once i was done with work yeah um and now that most of what that's been is has been cooking <laughs> which that's is, good yeah it is good because i am no cook i'm no cook either yeah but you know, cooking is great. You save money. You you eat healthier. Yeah, we're doing that Hello Fresh. Okay. Oh, we're not sponsored yet, so don't say their name. Hello Fresh. <laughs> this uh, episode brought to you by. No, it's I wish. Um. Um. But yeah, that's pretty much the only update because uh, yeah, I don't really have anything to say while I'm off Instagram. <laughs> um. What about you, Nick? My birthday was this weekend. Oh, this past week. Everybody. Okay, everybody. Listen up. <laughs> Happy no, birthday not, not, to no, everybody. Guys, guys stop singing. Happy. Stop. I can hear you. I can hear everyone singing right now. How was it? It was good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Had a lot of people come over. It's fun having design friends because uh, all your friends bring you gifts that they made. Oh. That they designed. Nice. And, and, you know, some of them were like things that they've been like per- personal projects and things they've been working on. But other pro- other people brought like samples and things from their jobs that they had designed for wow Um, sample sale stuff yeah sample sale like you know like you get a bunch of samples a few of them are like oh extra or whatever yeah anything gifts any any gifts you'd like to share i mean not to not to prioritize any friends over any others (laughs) well i i got it i got a t-shirt from my friend gabo it said design is dead it's beautiful Um, (laughs) (laughs) shout out to fdn studio lab check that out um and uh, let's see, I got a poster for my friend Henry. I got a wallet for my friend Santi. And I got a passport book from my friend Grace. Nice. Um, so a lot of good a lot of good gifts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, fun little celebration. Just good hanging out. Fun. Sweet. Um, but Did yeah. Did you guys design anything while you were all together? I mean, that many designers in a room, that seems like a missed opportunity. Uh. I don't think we did. 
could have we could have used all that brain power for good, but inte- instead we just drank alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I oh, mean, man. Steve Jobs threw some awesome parties. You know, I guess we got we got the iPod out of a Apple party. You think so? We got we got the MacBook. Yeah, I, I hope mean, so. they just all got together and they were like, when they just really let loose, they were like, "What if <laughs> you put all your music on like a little thing?" <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's how a great brainstorm starts. That's true. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I've been up to this. Well, uh, that's what I was up to this weekend. Uh, but also a little update: our our Discord. We launched it last oh, week. Yeah, it's been popping off. It's been great. It's been there's been a lot of conversation on there. I'm excited. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it's cool. There's the one thing. The one. Uh, if you guys don't know the Discord is, it's a chat room, essentially, so that you guys can come after or during the episode, whenever you're listening, and, you know, put your two cents in. Yeah. And we see it, and everyone else sees it, and we can conversate about the podcast. Um, a quick, Here's a quick, uh, like, example here. Uh, la- on last podcast, we talked about how cars were all becoming kind of the same. Mm. All being streamlined and being very aerodynamic and you know you miss all those like 50 50 flares and all that kind of cool stuff yeah uh but the someone on the discord says uh their name is m Rowe says to add to the car discussion on the last pod car design has also been subjected to newer safety laws which take into account pedestrian safety and crash c- crash safety mm-hmm. and aerodynamics come into play as well um, but ironically, many cars from the 80s had better fuel efficiency because they had lower curb weights um, not being weighed down by safety measures. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. That is interesting. Um, but yeah, guys, check out the Discord. It's on our Instagram link, I think. So like, if you go to our Instagram profile, My Details Pod, you can click that link. Or you can go to MyDetails.com and click the link up at the top to join the Discord. Nice. Yeah, it's awesome. I I love I love that we have a more direct connection to you guys that is more about conversation because you know, even just Instagram or YouTube, it's like, here's our new product, right. like here's our new thing, yeah. and then it's like just comments about that, but this is much more of an ongoing discussion and like anytime anywhere. Yeah. You know, we'll check it, you know, every day yeah. probably. I just can't wait until the day when somebody says I met my wife in the minor <laughs> details discord. That'll be the day. It's going to happen. I think that'll be the day that we should retire. Honestly, we got to go out on the high <laughs> note. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, I, don't know. I think that was, that's all the weekly updates we had this week. Yeah. Um, for the, for our topic this week. Well, transition. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not good with the transition. Transition. Um, well, we were talking about this uh, recently. Yeah, talking about trends in design. Yes, and, and not necessarily like what are our favorite trends or anything like that. Although we could talk about that, but like, what is the value of trends, right? To, to begin with, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting topic because, and somebody was talking about this in the Discord. I don't know if you can find them, but um, they were asking us where do trends come from like where where does a trend emerge from oh right yeah okay so here here it is in discord amusingly says i got a question about overall design trends when you start to see them emerge do you and james have an idea of where they came from um and they give an example of like the speckled trend i don't know if you guys are familiar with that we talked about a couple times yeah um it still hasn't died yet in 2019 uh, do you know which studio slash what kind of products first kickstarted the whole thing? Right. Well, here, so here's an interesting, maybe an interesting thought. Um, because there's one thing, it's one thing to be the creator of something, and it's another thing to popularize a trend or to, or to, or to trend a, a certain look or style. Because somebody could have created it, but somebody else could have seen the potential in it or a group of people could have seen the potential in it and then like basically uh given it trend status by all adopting 
mm. that style. Because like, you know, for instance, I think about sort of the the 3D pattern trend as being and uh, you're talking about the like te- like textured yeast bihar type yeah. of Yeah. So, so and and we're trying something new in this podcast. We are currently recording my screen so that I don't have to do as much editing <laughs> as I normally do. So um, yeah, if you're watching the YouTube, you can see James's computer screen. Yeah. But uh there's um there's like the Jawbone Jam box was like kind of the first um uh, well actually I think maybe the uh what was it? The Bluetooth headset was maybe the first the first thing that they had with these sort of three dimensional patterns. Right. Yeah. So this this trend's all about like adding some sort of texture to a product and kind of, you know, undulating the surface to create some sort of you know, like the one we're looking at right now, it's the jaw jaw jawbone jam box has kind of this diamond pattern yeah and each of the diamonds is kind of like shifted so it kind of gives a cool like kind of plays in the light a bit like probably, yeah. probably gives a really nice tactile feel absolutely and the thing is is that i ease bahar certainly like made this kind of uh his signature style in some ways yeah mm-hmm. but i don't know that he is the one that first initiated the trend, but I feel like he kind of latched. If he did, um, if he did make it, you know what it is, then that's that's awesome. But if if not, if there was something else bubbling up beneath the surface, and then he attached his name to it, that's something different. Yeah, and right? I, I I mean I definitely agree that I can I can see a scenario where Yves Bahar, you know, was was like maybe he maybe he was like at a at a factory in China or something like and he saw some sort of handcrafted like chiseled like chair and it had yeah. this like undulating effect on the surface and he's like oh that's kind of cool right or you know it, it could have been something online or who or maybe an artist painted something um yeah i mean it's always inspiration comes from anywhere right but i will say like i think i i would I, I think you're right in in talking about trends in the way that trends are just experiments that have been like main mainstreamed. Yeah. Ha, do you know the trend curve? Are you familiar with the trend curve or no? I think we've talked about it, but uh, I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast. Uh, the trend curve is a it's a pretty common kind of I- idea across all kinds of industries, marketing and all that, um, where you start off with this kind of inventor phase of this trend and it, it looks like a bell right it's the bell curve right so yeah the inventors at the at the front and then as time goes on uh more people are like oh that's kind of a cool experiment um you know and then the inventor or artist or whoever it is right and and they're like oh maybe i should try that out and those people are like the early adopters right yeah those are the people like buying the new tech product those are the people buying that weird chair that you would never buy and then as those early adopters you know buy these products and more and more of those early adopters buy them you start to get that kind of like uh i don't know ma- uh hipster hipster adopter <laughs> <laughs> you know the people who like got on board at the right time they're like the trendsetters in a way like yeah they 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 certainly aren't the ones to like go out and try the crazy new like fashion or electronic device but you know, they're the ones that can kind of see it starting to bubble up. Right? right. And then you finally hit the peak of like mainstream. Yeah. Um, you know, and everyone knows what this this trend is and everyone's buying the latest iPhone or whatever it is. Um and then eventually things start to fade out. Yeah. And you get the late adopters. Yeah. And then eventually you get like the old people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, when your grandma starts adopting the trend, that means the trend's dead. Right. <laughs> Is that true or no? Or is it <laughs> just <laughs> in an honest <laughs> way back up? May- the maybe. Curve. Who knows nowadays, honestly. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like some norm core stuff to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so what you're talking about is more technological trends. I mean, the trend curve is... Is it's for everything? It's applied to everything. Hmm. Um, like e- even like... You know, like we're talking about the speckled texture or Yves Bahar's kind of surface undulating texture. Like yeah. all of those trends started from this kind of early adopter phase 
eventually got to mainstream. And then who knows? I, I mean, I feel like specifically with those two trends, they're definitely mainstream right now. Yeah. I can see a lot of designers using those techniques, if not already phasing out of those techniques. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there there's definitely multiple areas in which trends can manifest themselves within industrial design. You can have CMF trends, you can have form trends, mm-hmm. um, and, and you can have technological trends. And CMF is color material finish. Oh, For my mom. Yeah. Got to tell my mom that. Oh, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's in, it is interesting because I don't know that I could pinpoint like where exactly the speckled trend came from. Do you know? Um, I think that's, that was the actual question that was proposed in the discord by amusingly was like specifically where did that trend come from? And, uh, I I believe, you know, I'm just speculating. Obviously it's, it's very ambiguous, like where a, a speckled like texture or color comes from. Um, but I, I feel like it came, it grew out of the terrazzo mm. trend. Terrazzo is like the mosaic kind of like, terrazzo. I don't know. Yeah, you, you, you've seen like how ter, do you spell ter, that? terrazzo patios, T-E-R-R-A-Z-Z-O, I think maybe. Um, It's like, like mosaic. It's like mm. broken tiles laid into concrete. Right. You probably had had a terrazzo floor in your high school cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it you know, terrazzo has been kind of popularized by postmodern uh design, especially kind of recently, I would say the past 5 years in the furniture kind of experimental area. Yeah. Um and I feel like terrazzo kind of evolved into speckles, right? It's kind of like this mix match miss like it's kind of like if you dropped confetti on the floor check it out crate and barrel plates terrazzo uh, style james is hey james we can is save 10 sur- percent. james is surfing the web he's come on en- he's enjoying his screen I'll, capture uh, software i'll take 200 i can't even take 200 <laughs> oh okay <laughs> this is absurd um uh but <laughs> Okay, we got some West Elm. Yeah, okay, I'm following you. This so that that's my hypothesis is that the speckled uh, trend came out of the terrazzo trend, right? Um, and and yeah, I mean, I don't know where terrazzo. I mean, terrazzo itself, you know, came from yeah, I don't know, like ancient times where people would yeah stick tiles in concrete to make it look nicer. Or something. I mean, I feel like I I have seen some. Um, some speckles in sort of the Memphis era. Yeah. And did that, I mean, did those come out of that same, that same thing? I mean, I definitely think Terrazzo came out of the the Memphis movement. Yeah. If not involved in the Memphis movement, but, right. but also another thing that, uh, and you know, there's all kinds of like thoughts around trends and things like that. But another thing that I thought about or that I've heard before is that, I've just heard this. I don't know if it's. <laughs> I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Where were you the night of September twenty first? <laughs> uh, every thirty years uh, is a cycle. So. Oh yeah. So it's, it's twenty nineteen. So therefore, I guess thirty years from now it's nineteen ninety. How do you do math? Oh my gosh. 1989. It's, it is 1989. So if you, you might have noticed, like it feels kind of like the nineties are coming back right now. Right. And you know, in the past 10 years, it kind of felt like eighties were in. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know specifically why I have every 30 theories. years, every 30 years, like things come back. But right now we're like, get your game boy color out. It's going to be hot. <laughs> oh, and, and to, to, to go off the oh. game boy color, you guys remember the clear game boy color? Um, the purple clear the, one? The purple clear one. Yeah, where you could see the in, interior. Oh, here you go. I bet you that trend's going to come back. Oh, the man. Mac, the original. The, oh, iMac. yeah. The original. Well, iMac um, G3, was it? Yeah, iMac G3 with the clear, translucent, like, colored plastic. Oh. I, I bet you I bet you these trends are going to come back. I really I mean, hope e- so. Even Tom Dixon did a new... Um, he Tom Dixon designed a new Native Union charger. Search Tom Dixon Native Union, um, where again he used a clear face and exposed the electronics oh, inside. Oh yeah, 
it's really beautiful and really expensive. But um, I'm also not a big fan of Tom Dixon. Tom Dixon is a British designer, but um, this one I thought he did a really nice job on. Yeah, I can see those insides. Look at those guts. So, so if I was going to be a tr- trend predictor, you just kind of like look back 30 years, see what is cool, and then right. kind of revive it. Interesting. Wait, how did you, you have a tr- you have an idea on how? Oh yeah. Why it's 30 years? Okay, I think that this this might be this might be super obvious. Okay. Um, and it might not be that enlightened that I would come up with this, but the way that I see it is a lot of the people that were growing up during that time period are now in the position to be making decisions about creative, like oh. creative trends. Like this is our, this is nostalgia for us, right? Yeah. I mean, I grew up with a Game Boy. I didn't have the Game Boy Color Clear one, but. Exactly. But now I'm in the position to start like implementing those kind yes. of ideas. So I think, I think is it is in large part nostalgia driven by the creatives who were coming of age during that time. That's interesting. Um, and then I guess another 30 years from now, it would, we'd be 60 and retired, right? Is that why it doesn't work <laughs> the other way? Keep going. Uh, no, I mean, whoever's growing up during this time period is then in their 40s, you know, in their 30s and 40s when... They don't make decision. They don't make the creative decisions anymore. They make the they make the creative decisions that are nostalgic to this time period. Mm. Um. So yeah, when we're sixty, I mean, when we're sixty and seventy, we're pretty much we're going to be shoved out of the labor force. <laughs> I, <laughs> you're laughing, but also it's it's kind of sad too. Yeah, it's kind of sad that. Do you ever think about how sad it is like, as you get older, the less you're like recognized in society? Yeah. That's a sad thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not even a design as thought. We, I'm sorry about that. As we go forward, <laughs> don't be, I, don't, I don't want to inject that like negativity into the podcast. As we go forward, I mean, AI is going to take everybody's job, Nick. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think I think that that is the reason why trends recirculate. Now, my curiosity is like there are certainly where do the original like original trends come from you know that that come from a certain area because there are things that happen like i was um i was recently watching this video this uh adam savage video um and it was about the guy the guy from mythbusters yeah kit bashing or kit busting um let's see adam savage kit kit bash yeah so what he does is he essentially like goes through um, how they used to make models for Star Wars. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, you take you take pieces, literal pieces from like kits from these kits where like, they like model cars and model planes. And yeah, they, and so this is how they did a lot of the models in Star Wars. They like just mashed the up Millennium Falcon and all of these things. But now all of those things are so recognizable. Um, and I was talking to my buddy Andrew Brace about this, that like now concept artists have to put these details into their concept work, even though like when they were creating these, these were totally, it was just like mashing these two things together to create these details. That is really interesting Yeah, that you say it like that. Because I, I mean, I've and seen... And this was Andrew's observation not okay, this, mine. this is your friends but yeah but it's still really interesting yeah it's interesting because i always see these concept artists right yeah you know you see all these cool concept art pieces online whether it's robots or planes or whatever and they are very like detail oriented there's yeah. like a bunch of nuts and bolts and like paneling and yeah. all these like different things coming together to create this robot and i mean that's a completely different mindset than i have right like I'm always like seamless, like no, no lines, no bolts right. or anything. Um, I feel like I can't even get my mind to like switch to <laughs> switch to a concept art mindset. But well, it, it's interesting that you say that that style came from kit bashing of just taking these model airplanes and cars and mashing them together. Yeah. Well, when Andrew said that to me, I mean, I have seen time lapses of concept artist work and they are certainly while what they're doing is extremely skilled, they are doing things like taking imagery from like Photoshop. Like I I saw this, I think it was on Learn Squared, this um, 
this class that you could take for concept art. And the in the in the video for it, it's like there he's like snipping out columns from buildings, like like colonnades, like multiple columns, and like stretching them and manipulating them, and then like repeating them. Does he create an airplane? What was it? No, it w- it was like a futuristic city. Oh, that's um, interesting. But yeah, he he does all these all this stuff um, using a lot of Photoshop imagery. So it's not all just from scratch. Right. In a way, he's he is kind of kit bashing or busting. I keep forgetting what it is. It's it's kit bashing. Yeah. I think I don't know if the Adam Savage just mix, mi- made up kit busting because he's a MythBuster. But <laughs> right, that makes sense. But oh yeah, here it is. So like. Let's see if we can watch the trailer cuz like you right. can see how this is this looks incredible and like I wouldn't even know where to start but what he's doing is just like taking things from Photoshop or like manipulating things within Photoshop to create these like like futuristic cities and things like that. Yeah, that's it's pretty amazing. But that all being said, the reason that I brought that up is because Star Wars and what it created in that, like, that was, I would say that there's probably elements of other things that are coming into it, like C-3PO. Oh, here we go. So the video's playing now. So you can you can see where the concept artist is using, mm, and, and, um, like, right. using these, uh, these bits of Photoshop to so this create is, these futuristic cities. Right, and, and for those of you that aren't, aren't, uh, looking it's a uh, <laughs> it's like an old ancient ruin of i don't know maybe a castle or some sort of roman ruin and it's like copying pasting these columns like you're saying and creating some sort of like i don't know floating city it looked yeah. like yeah i don't know it yeah. looked, it's cool i mean concept artists are a completely different mindset from industrial design yeah and but- it's interesting how you know we talk to like several designers they're always there, there's been many designers that I've talked to that concept art was their entryway into industrial design. Right. Yeah. Like we talked to uh, Derek. Derek. Derek had that thought. Derek Cassio. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it makes a lot of sense, and I do think that Star Wars inspired a lot of people to go into concept art, mm-hmm. and 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 yeah, Derek even said that a lot of those guys that were working on it were industrial designers. Um. But I, I got another question. Okay. Um, well, I actually have two questions. First, oh, first one is, is, so there are these trend sites, and I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but I forget what they're called. Like there's like one called probably like trend style or trend site or mm. something like that. Um, and it's mainly used for like fashion, but houseware industry uses it a lot. Essentially, it's these websites where you can pay a lot of money and their whole company's their whole company is to predict trends, right? And, and I don't know, are you familiar, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever played around with these? I have not. I haven't. We used uh, I, I forget which one it was called, um, but we used one at Petmate when I was there, and it was interesting. Um, and I think it kind of kind of reckons back to what we were talking about earlier, um, because you know the the whole idea of this company is like create these mood boards and create these color palettes that you know we can push out to the fashion industry or push out to the houseware industry and they can use in their products yeah for you know 2020 whatever year it is and you know they pulling inspiration from all these artists kind of like we were talking about earlier it's like you know these people that are experimenting with new materials or, or new designs and you know they're just posting on behance or instagram or something these trend sites will take those images, mm. put them in the mood board, and then push them out saying like, oh, this is the new trend. We've mm. seen several artists doing this new thing. Yeah. Whether that's, you know, maybe maybe the new trend stripes, I don't know. Yeah. Or the translucent thing like yeah. we were talking about. Um, and the interesting thing that I've always thought about these whole companies that predict trends is it's almost a chicken and an egg scenario. Right. Because if if all these fortune 500 companies are subscribing to these trend sites, then are the trend sites predicting the trends or just 
like prescribing the trends. Right. Yeah, that is a really interesting quandary because I mean, I, like I said, I've never seen one of those. I don't know that I've really ever been in companies that use use those just trend a, reports. It's just a really expensive mood board. Right. But it is interesting that it would kind of dictate the way that you're viewing these trends and that and your utilization of these trends because you're being told that they're going to be trends. Right. And it and it's it does seem kind of weird because it seems like a trend is something that just happens like grassroots organically. Right. But no no. <laughs> You got you got Levi Strauss like pushing you know ripped jeans this year because yeah. it's because because that's what the style site said right. Well, I'll rip my jeans myself. Thank you very much. Um, I I don't have an answer for you. I just that's yeah. like a thing that I've experienced specifically, like in the trend industry. Right. Um, but well, and and another thing that that uh, that I've been thinking about a lot recently is. Um, we live in a time, especially with Instagram, where conceptual product work has never been so visible. And so people are posting conceptual work all the time. And I feel like it's this really strange existence that we're in right now in that I can scroll through my feed of Instagram or go into Behance and not know sometimes whether a product is real or fake even if it's a rendering i might think it's a rendering of a real thing yeah Uh and and it's very strange because i I don't know it's like we're creating this ecosystem of this conceptual work and that itself is i feel like starting trends within our community uh i don't know what do you have any thoughts on that i definitely can see some of those like nuances in the conceptual work um I mean, I made a fat strap chair with <laughs> ratchet straps, and I feel like there was a small ripple of ratchet straps afterwards. Oh yeah, I, I like I like to think <laughs> I like to think so. But yeah, uh, um, that's interesting as well. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Like the the ability we have nowadays to create very realistic looking images and to be able to share those images uh, almost as if they're real. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean that that changes the trend game for sure. Yeah, because you can just make up a product. Mm-hmm. If it's if it takes off, it takes off. Right, and and here's here's sort of a closing thought. Trying to get get back to that point I was going to make about Star Wars, which is Star Wars was in terms of the style and everything. In in my estimation and to my recollection, completely unique to that era, like. It was it was like n- nothing anyone had ever seen before, but then spawned all of this trend, and even spawned innovation. Yeah, I, I it's even. I mean, we can even go deep to like art imitating life or life right. imitating art. Like you know, life. I feel like imitates art. Honestly, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's back and forth. Yeah, the old saying. That's what the old saying is, right? Right. But like, I'm very. I'm more interested. I like the whole, like, the recurring trend thing, but I am very interested in the trends that are sort of seemingly from nowhere that that we never could have seen coming. I, I feel like a lot of the footwear, I like, mean, it's a... Pro- like the notch? A- <laughs> the notch? That's not a trend. No! <laughs> um, I mean, I guess with footwear, you a lot of that, a lot of the trend comes around innovation within that space but i would say that a lot of the footwear right now seems unprecedented in terms of in terms of just like never seeing anything quite like it before in history i would agree we're definitely in a footwear renaissance for sure yeah and so those those kind of things i'm really interested in and here's another thought on top of that there are things that come along that are way ahead of their time but over time become much more appealing and like oh yeah i can see that coming into my life it's that it's that artist inventor phase yeah it's like whoa we don't want that right james and i are like mainstream mainstream dudes (laughs) you know (laughs) so it's like i I mean it's almost like you could you can i mean i i don't know how easy this is but it's like you could 
start a trend by being being like the pure futurist and just trying to create something outside of the trends that is not adopted by anybody initially. Yeah. But then in 30 years, right. once again, maybe there is that moment where people are like, oh, that's that's actually really sweet. Yeah, I yeah, there are a lot of scenarios where this happens. It happens really frequently. I remember in school, I had this one friend, he was a graphic designer. Um, and this was, what, seven years ago? I don't know how long, gosh, I'm getting old, I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, he was putting really a lot a lot of gradients mm. on his designs. Yeah. And this was back in the day where, you know, we had kind of phased out of skeuomorphism, which was this idea of, you know, having the apps look exactly like the real thing, like having the buttons have like a shiny glossy piece to them or having the notepad look like it was actually paper. Yeah. Um, we are starting to phase out of that into like a super flat, super minimal. Right. You know, don't use it. Who uses gradients? No one uses gradients. Yeah. And and my friend was using gradients and he got ridiculed in front of the whole class for using gradients. Oh, um, by whom? By the whole class. <laughs> like everyone in the class was like, this is, you, you're a joke. Who uses gradients? No one uses gradients. Did you guys burn him at the stake? No, no. I He was <laughs> he was a graphic designer. He was telling this story to me. Oh, right. Um, I, I wasn't in the graphic design gotcha. class. But, um, and yeah, now pull up your iPhone, iOS, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Every app has a gradient on it. Right. Gradients are mainstream. Instagram app, everything. Yeah. Can I, can I state that I was... I don't know that I was ahead of the trend. A loop. But I but I was all about the gradients my senior year yeah. of college. Oh, let me see if I can find it. I think you were just accidentally making bad designs. W- <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I found it. James, are you pulling up your what are you pulling up? This is this is from my thesis. Are that's you pulling your that's thesis the kind project? of gradient. That's the kind of gradient I was oh, doing. Oh wow. Oh no. All of it. Oh dear. Yeah. Blue to i was i was using primary colors blue to yellow to magenta yeah. for for those of who you who are just listening james has pulled up his uh, pdf of uh, your thesis project and it's it has text that is a rainbow gradient oh yeah yeah rain, like full rainbow red red yellow blue all the colors in between you know you love it um uh but I, anyway I, I have one i have one more question i think this yes. will this will help tie everything back together tie it up nick what is the value of trends in design? Like, there are these fleeting moments that happen every 30 years or so, right? And, you know, they conflict with timeless design, hmm. right? Like, if you want to create a timeless design, you need to think about how it can be impervious to trends. Yeah. And is that bad, though? Like, is it bad to use a trend in your designs? Because, I mean, it's going to go out of style. Yeah. Well, okay. So here is here is a 100-foot view of trends. Yeah. We often go to museums or go to old cities, and we look at the architecture of a time period, and we say, this is... This is the architecture of this time period. Right. The Roman architecture. Yes. This 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 kind of decoration is typical of that time. And this is what it said about the people that lived in that time. Right. And so I think that trends trends obviously speak something to the consumer because otherwise they wouldn't be trends. Right. They speak something to us in terms of the time period in which we live. And therefore, in the future, they kind of like they are definitive markers of certain things, certain attributes of our society. I, I think it's I think it's like a really excellent kind of um, time capsule to to share with future generations like this is what was of that time and why it was valuable. right. Um, that's a yeah, that's an interesting point as because they're, like you're saying, they're like time capsules. There's this like, it's almost like a moment of nostalgia when you look back on it. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I remember that. Like 10 years ago, you designed this thing that was like speckled or, you know, we're thinking like 10 years from now. Yeah. Putting those speckles on it. What do you think the value is? I mean, I I feel like I personally definitely tried to, I guess, I don't know, not, not restrain myself from trends, but 
you know, use them very conservatively. Mm -hmm. Because I, I do want to create more timeless products, I think it does conflict in in a longer time period. Like if you want to design a product that's going to last 10 years or so, you know, probably don't splatter that thing with speckles, right? Probably don't like, you know, make it pink because pink is the new color or whatever, right? Is that because you think people will just throw it out? Well, yeah. When it becomes irrelevant? I mean, if you have something that is emotional and very, uh, I don't know, proud and loud as a trend, you know, it, it can get old um, in a shorter amount of time than a very subdued and simple product could. Yeah. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of stating this as the other side of the, uh, the argument, just, just to give the two sides. Right. But then in 30 years, boy, it's coming back. You're going to want that speckle, <laughs> speckle that speckle all over. Oh man. All right. Should we, should we get to some questions? We should get to some questions. Um, well, we oh. had a, we had a nice, good few questions come in this week. Uh, and we got a voicemail. Ooh, a voicemail. All right. And if you guys want to give us a ring, our number is 646-494-4011. Uh, it's Google voicemail. We won't pick up. Don't be scared. Um, <laughs> all right. This one comes from B Thumb Design, I believe. All right. Let's play it. Nick, James, fellas, I'm thinking here to myself about artists and designers and the comparison between the two. And I know a lot of artists have some kind of tell or style, I'm particularly thinking of, uh, you know, the greats like Van Gogh, who have a very particular uh, fingerprint on any piece that they produce. So I know that oftentimes designers uh, can have that same tendency to have a style, sort of a signature that they leave in all of their design pieces. Is that a benefit or a detriment? Uh, having a very defined style as an artist usually is seen as a good thing, uh, but if your products all look like they're from the same uh, person, even if they're across multiple brands, could that be a detriment or is that a point of strength? What are your thoughts? Hmm. Anyways, thanks, guys. That, that ties in perfectly with the conversation. Yes, it does. That's a great question. What do you think, Nick? I mean... I you know, I'm I'm thinking on Yves Bahar again, the, yeah. the industrial designer who adds that surface texture. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's something interesting about that surface texture is that that I don't feel like it's not super loud and super proud. I don't think it's going to be, you know, out of style in several years. I think it's subdued enough to not be obtrusive. Yeah. But I also think it's unique enough to re- have really boosted him as a designer. Like I don't know if if Yuz Bahar didn't. I, I feel like if he didn't have that surface texture, that kind of surface texture look that he does, I don't know if he would be as big as he is today. Right. Well, I think what he really tapped into was this this thing that nobody else was tapping into at the time, which was this idea that. I don't I, like form is free in a way. It's like if I'm going to have a grill pattern, I could make it just a flat grill pattern. But if I add this texture or movement or pattern to it, it suddenly has a lot more value. Right. There, There is, it's almost like a gem or a diamond in a way. Yeah. Right. Because the, the tooling is going to cost the exact same amount, whether it's, a flat panel or if it has some sort of undulating detail on it. But I think what's unique about what uh, that's unique about use Bahar's textures is that I feel like they're very kind of organic and geometric at the same time. Mm. And there is like that certain interesting, I don't know, it's twist that he puts on his textures. Right. There's, there's kind of a, a human, a human quality to them. Kind of like a parametric quality. I'm not really sure what it is. Yeah. They're both they're both kind of parametric, but also they feel very human at the same time. Like they feel maybe even like slightly flawed in yeah. a way. Oh, yeah, because it's kind of like what I was referring to with like the chiseled look. Yeah. It's like it's almost like if, you know, some art art artisan came and like chiseled out a, a speaker grill or something. Right. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean so I think that kind of 
talking about that human feel, but also when it comes to the designer and, and making their mark across multiple products, I do think that generally people do like a story and kind of a connection to some of their products. And I think that that's why often star designers are used to push a brand is because people, uh, this has been a feeling of mine for a long time is like people used to go to their town craftsman or their, you know, town blacksmith or whatever. And that person doesn't exist anymore, but but it was nice during that time to be able to to tell the story of the product that it that it came from this person yeah. from this local artisan and yeah. and people still do that people buy custom furniture because there's i think they want like a really robust piece but they also want a connection to the person who made it yeah i yeah i definitely i definitely think that having a unique style is I think nowadays it's definitely a a good thing. Yeah. I think, you know, like if you were going to say, I, you know, I don't want to have a style. I just want to be plain Jane, very like straightforward, stick with all the brand language um, and, and just, you know, kind of do complete the project. I think you're going to, I don't know, I, I think you're going to go – the way that any other piece, person would go, like just completing like some normal, I, I don't know. I feel like I don't, I'm not making any sense. <laughs> um, I feel like having a style makes you unique. Yeah. I think that's kind of what it comes down to. And yes, being unique, it can be a detriment in some scenarios, right? Like, you know, no one's going to hire you to to do an, an, a, a brawn product or maybe mm. they would, I don't know. Bronze, not on a bronze, a different story, but yeah, no, but, um, I also don't think that you can take another person's style. Like, I don't think that if if there's a new designer in town and they try to take Dieter Rams' style, that they would be as famous. Mm. I think you. I think specifically with like an industrial designer, you have to have kind of a unique style that's built off of whatever your inspiration was. Right. You can't just like copy a, a style and right take it forward. Yeah. Well, and or maybe you could. I don't really know, honestly. Well, I mean, yeah. Would you say that Johnny Ive is just heavily inspired by Dieter Rams? Because I wouldn't say that he's necessarily copying the style, but there is an ethic around the style. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think Johnny Ive has a distinct style mm. per se. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like Mark Newson does, mm. but like if if there was a bunch of products in a room and I saw, and one of them was designed by Johnny Ive, I don't know if I could pick it out. I feel like Johnny Ive's style is optimization in mm-hmm. a way. Like everything, everything construction wise just feels further and further optimized as, as they go on and on. He seems yeah. kind of obsessive around that. Yeah. I remember, I think it was an objectified where he's, he's talking about like when they see and see, CNC to out like the iMac, you could get two keyboard covers out of it, like out of the screen area. Oh, so I I think that there's there's like details like that that he gets really into. Yeah. Um. Although a lot of the his earlier stuff was was like kind of playful, and it's become much more serious. That's interesting. My favorite, my favorite iMac is that one that's got the the domed base to it and the articulating arm. <laughs> right. And Which know. one? What is that one? I have no clue. I'm gonna put dome. This could be. This could. Oh, oh, there we go. Up. There it is. G4. It's like a, a half of a half of a soccer ball. There we go. With a screen coming out of it. Oh man, I love that. Yeah, that's a quite quite distinct for sure it's so interesting huh that's interesting yeah that's interesting that it now that i'm looking at johnny's older products huh yeah Yeah, but um the other point that i was going to make um is that when you compare i mean especially in his example he said he talks about van gogh um and one of the things with artists and this is not this is not necessarily true across the board, but I feel like artists have 
their maybe particular medium. I mean, mm. some of them do. Yeah. And so Van Gogh, he's he was specifically a painter. I don't know that he did any sculpture work, but he's spending all of this time uh, perfecting this technique through painting. And as industrial designers, I feel like a lot of our work is is through so many different mediums. It's hard to have a that it's style. It's hard. It it might be harder to have a style that is uniform across all lines. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I, I don't know. I think I, I think there can be. I think it can go either way. Like if it's a form style. I mean, I think about Kareem Rashid. Right. You know, the the his work is very organic. Um, and it's almost like if you see anything that's very organic, it's like oh. Did Cream Machine do that? Yeah. Um, and I feel like he kind of hopped on that train and he really sold it. And and maybe he was just the loudest one doing it. And that's why his his that kind of style is attributed to him. But um, another thing I was thinking about as well is I, I think maybe the reason that people are scared of styles or like scared of thinking it might be a detriment is that, you know, it might be rejected. Right. And I think mm. I think... It's a great point. That's that's certainly a, a valid thought, but I also will say that you can change your style. Right. I mean, even talking about Van Gogh, like, didn't Van Gogh have like a blue period, like where he painted uh, all that blue? was Picasso. Picasso. Did are you sure? Is that Picasso? Yeah. Blue yeah, you're right. But yeah, I mean, think about Picasso. His style changed multiple times. Yeah. Um, and I think designers can do the same thing. Just like we were talking about Johnny Ive. Now that you pointed it out, it seems like his earlier products were a little more playful. He's, yeah. He's really become much more refined. Yeah, I don't know that, you know, your style is not static. Right. I think the probably the thing, yeah, the thing that people are worried about, the the other thing that you could be worried about is having a style that people like, but then switching that style and then people not liking. It's just like a band. Yeah. Oh my I mean the sophomore slump and and things like that, those those things are real. Yeah. Um, and so I think uh, that is another element that, that plays into it is like once you've developed a style, like you may want to uh, hold on to it, but I, I don't know. I think a, dis- a style makes you unique and distinct for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be a detriment or it can be a positive. It depends on the style. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, keep trying a style till it be, till it, if, if you want to style, I don't know. That, that was a great question. Thanks for yeah. sending that in. Um, yeah. Of course, yeah, if you guys want to send in a voicemail, it's probably going to get heard because we only get like once, one a week. <laughs> um, do we have time for an email question? I think we have time for one question. All right. Uh, this one comes from Lucas. Yeah. And they say, a classmate recently presented their idea of a lamp. The whole design was an exact copy of an existing lamp. Nobody in the class or the professor realized it. I was shocked and didn't say anything. How would you react? Oh, man. I I thought this was just a great short question. Yeah. I would probably flip a chair or table or, you know, (laughs) knock somebody over. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. How would you react? Um, I don't. I, I would definitely call them out for sure. If I was in the room, I'd be like, yeah. If if it was an exact copy, I I would have been like, "Hey, like I I would have pulled up my phone or something like, "Hey, this looks exactly like this. Was this a coincidence or can you explain right. this?" Um I actually have a story with this cuz Whoa. Cuz I I cuz I read this question and it reminded me of one time when I was in school. Oh. And I you know, I'm not going to like out anyone, but uh w- when I was a a senior, we had our senior projects and um you know, we all presented and then there was this student who got up there and, you know, this is your senior project, right? This is the grand finale. Like you've worked all semester on this thing. Like this is the capstone. This is the thesis. Like this, this is it. Yeah. You better nail it. (laughs) And, uh, and this student gets up there and they're like, Oh, here's my project. You know, first of all, this student, I wasn't really familiar with them. Like I wasn't friends with them. Uh, no one really knew them mm. that well. Like we would see them every once in a while in the hallway, but 
they were never in the studio working. You know, mm. we, we were all in the studio working and you see, you know, those ghost students. That oh you, yeah. They never see. Anyways, we were like, okay, well she, you know, they're, they're not going to have anything interesting. Uh, they present their project and it's like, dang, this thing's great. Um, and it, it was, I, I don't know if I should say what it was. Should I say what it was? I don't know. I'll gonna follow say, your heart. I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. <laughs> It, it was a it was a, a vibrator, um, oh, and 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 it was a good one. They like designed it really nicely. Yeah, and um, and we were all amazed. Everyone in the class was like, "Whoa!" Jaws were dropped. Yeah, and and you know we all gave them a, gave them a round of applause. And um, my professor sits there in silence, and he pulls out his phone, and he's like, "Uh." this is already a product and shows the whole class. And everyone was just like, <gasps> Oh my gosh. They had just taken all the images offline oh and added it to their presentation. Gosh. And I think they made like one improvement to it or something like that. But it was like, it, it was an exact copy, like just like this scenario. Yeah. And it was, it, yeah, they, the student cried for sure. Oh man. That, that is crazy. Gosh, there's always those stories in, in design school. Yeah. But uh, you know, when it comes to when it comes to the question, that that's amazing. When it comes to the question, I do I do wonder, because like, you know, we saw recently with uh Sebastian calling out Fabio for copying, like Lucas, is this one hundred percent an exact copy? Because some people they're like no, you copied them, and and it's maybe yeah, maybe it's inspiration. Maybe it's I want to know that it's like one hundred percent carbon copy. That's what I want. Yeah, um, if it was a photocopy, then yes, you should definitely. Yes, I would. I'd probably talk to the professor. I don't know if I would, actually. I, I I personally would probably call him out in the middle of class. But <laughs> if you if you're not that bold, I would definitely talk to the professor. <laughs> Some of that Nick Baker, North Carolina justice. That's right. Watch out, Chuck Norris. Nick Baker's in town. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for sending in, Lucas. Uh, yeah, a good, good little chuckle. Um, and yeah, don't don't pull out images off the internet and try to pass it off as your project because that's no. a bad idea. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, if you guys have a question yourself, feel free to send it into my details podcast at gmail dot com. Oh yeah. Um. Every week, we like to shout out someone who's been doing something cool on the Instagram. And uh, James has been off Instagram, so I just kind of picked myself this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted, or we wanted to shout out Matt Marchand. Uh, oh yeah, they are a industrial design student, actually. Uh, uh, I think SJSU. I think I looked it up. I don't know what SJSU, San Jose State University. I assume. Okay. Um, and, and Matt just does a lot of sketches, and his sketch style is really interesting. Yeah, it's um, nice. It, it's kind of got like this kind of grungy look to it, but also yeah. very like, I don't know, it has it has a emotion to it. Hey, man, we're 30 years out, you know, grunge is back. Grunge is back, I guess so, right? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like the one, the one sketch I'm looking at as well is conceptual, and, you know, I love those conceptual things. Mm-hmm. It's a couch that's also... A workbench. Hot darn. <laughs> I need that in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, check out Matt.Marchand. That's M-A-R-C-H-A-N-D yeah. on Instagram. Um, and uh, and yeah. Yeah, Matt, I hope uh, if you ever make this couch that you are never sent to go sleep on it some night <laughs> with your significant other because you're like, what's this thing digging into my back? Oh my it's a chisel. It's a chisel. <laughs> oh man. Um but yeah, really nice sketches. I, I like them. They're pretty lively. They're, it's a unique style. You should yeah. check it out. And they're the the thing that's great about these is that they're they're rough in a way, but they're also very clear. Yeah, it's like it's like the the optimal thing that we all strive for is that like, yeah. quick, rough, but Ooh. also like clean. You want that rough and clean? Yes. That balance? Mm-hmm. Matt's been nailing it recently, so. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. 
thanks for listening, guys. Our uh, intros, outros by Kiyoshi the Kid. Mm-hmm. Subscribe, rate, like. Yeah. Like, comment, tell your friends. Tell your friends. We got to push that more. Tell your mom. Tell your mom if she likes design. Yeah. Or she, she doesn't. Maybe. She can get on the specific Discord that, that Nick set up for his mom. Yes, we have a we have a, <laughs> a, a parents Discord for all the parents of the Minor Details podcast. What listeners. are they talking about? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> hop on the Discord, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. And as always, I'm at Nick B. Baker. And I'm at I Draw and Receipts. Peace out. Later. <laughs>